So the barrier algorithm is going to work like this. When a thread arrives at a barrier, what it is going to do is it is decrement the count, exactly like, like in the counting barrier. It's going to decrement the count. But after it decrements the count, what it is going to do is it is going to spin on sense reversal. Remember that you know the sense flag is going to be true for this barrier, and once everybody has progressed to the next barrier, the, the sense flag will become uh, false. And therefore, let's say that we are executing the, the true barrier. In other words, all the threads are executing somewhere here. The sense flag is true, and so if T1 comes along, it decrements the count, and it's not going to worry about whether the count has become zero or not. All that it is going to wait on is for the sense to reverse. So it's, it's saying, well, my sense is we are on the true barrier. I'll stay here until the sense becomes false. I'll know then that, that we've moved on to uh, the next barrier point. That's the idea behind, uh, behind what all the processes will do except the last one. What will the last one do? Well, you guessed it. The last one, in addition to resetting the count to n, which was happening in the counting barrier, it is also going to reverse the sense flag. So the last processor comes along and finds that the count has become zero. It'll reset it to n. No problem with that. And then it is going to reverse the sense flag. It used to be true here. It is going to reset it to false. And all the other guys are waiting on the sense reversal. So decrementing the count itself and changing the, the count value, that doesn't do anything to these threads. Only when the uh, sense flag is reversed, all these guys come out of the spin loop and they can go on. So you can see now that we have only one spinning episode per critical section or one spinning episode per barrier. What we're doing is we decrement the count and spin on sense reversal. Last guy decrements the count. When count goes to zero, resets it to n, and then it is going to reverse the sense. And that is the signal for all the waiting processes to say, well, we can now go on to the next phase of the computation. So we've gotten rid of one of the spinning episodes that used to be there in the um, pure counting version of the centralized barrier. Well, the centralized uh, barrier is simple and intuitive as to what's going on. And of course, with the sense reversing barrier, we got rid of two spinning episodes and got it down to, uh, to one. All of these are good things. But the problem is that you have a sing shared variable for all the processes. And so if you have a large scale uh, multiprocessor and if you're running a large scale scientific applications with lots of parallel threads and they have to do a barrier, causes a lot of contention on the interconnection network because it is hot spot for this uh, shared variable. And remember what our good friend uh, Chuck Thacker said, less sharing means the uh, multiprocessor is more scalable. And that is something that we want to carry forward in thinking about how to get rid of this uh, sharing that's happening among a large number of processors in order to build a more scalable version of a barrier synchronization algorithm.